What has happened to a nation that used to fear the Lord? To a people whose foundation was built upon God's word. We've allowed the world's opinion to chart a different way. But it's time the church of Jesus Christ should boldly stand and say, God's word will stand against the raging tide. All those who criticize and work their evil plan, God's word will stand against the gates of hell with power to prevail in the hearts of men. God's word will stand. walls remove it from the schools teach our children that we're animals speak against the golden rule try and hide our christian heritage from the public eye but they'll never overcome god's word no matter how they try god's word will stand against the raging tide all those who criticize and work their evil plan god's word will stand against the gates of hell with power to prevail in the hearts of men god's word will stand against the gates of hell with power to prevail in the hearts of men god's word will stand against the raging tide all those who criticize and work their evil plans god's word will stand against the gates of hell Thank you, girls. I'm glad when nothing else will stand. I'm glad the Word of God will stand. Amen. All right. Stand together with me tonight. Get your Bible in your hand if you would. Amen. Girls, thank you all tonight. I always enjoy hearing you sing and always enjoy that good singing. Good singing. Going to miss that when all y'all grown up and married. Of course, maybe by the time all of y'all are, I'll be in heaven won't have to worry about it. But uh, anyway... Uh, joy, good singing like that. Chapter number six of First Corinthians, please, tonight. I want to go ahead and preach a little bit tonight out of this book. Brother Hulk will be with us Sunday. And I'm just, I, it's hard for me not to study this book. I'm just getting so much that God's given us through this Word of God. And this is an interesting passage because I have people ask me about this passage a lot. And so, uh, preacher, what does that really mean? And so I'm going to deal with it a little bit tonight and kind of give you some ideas on it. And instead of us uh, just reading a lot of verses, uh, I want to read just the first verse and then we'll go through. But I'm only going to go through about six verses tonight. Uh, it's Wednesday night and uh, I'm going to cover just a portion that I, I want to cover tonight. Then I'll come back and we'll get the rest of it. But there are some chapters in this book coming up. Some of the questions of the ages that people want to know. 
and we're going to do our best to expound upon them and give you what God's Word says. And I've learned this. I've learned if you'll stand upon the Word of God as they just sung about, it'll help you every day of your life. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for the last couple of days too to say this. That Danielle took a couple of days off work just to spend with me. We don't get a chance to spend much time together anymore. And she went camping with me a couple of days and played golf with me a couple of days. And, and uh, I want to thank my wife. She stayed here and had to do some work and different things. But it was a real joy to have my daughter with me just a couple of days before at Yankee ends up taking her forever. And uh, so I just uh, uh, enjoyed that this week and thank the Lord for it. And it's uh, real good to be back and, and uh, be in the pulpit tonight. It's going to be a busy summer for me, so pray that God will really help us. And I want to see God do some great things at Calvary this summer as well. All right. Verse 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Let's stop right there. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you tonight for the Word of God. Lord, I know tonight it is powerful. And I know tonight, Lord, if we ever get right, it'll be when spirit and truth collide. And Lord, I pray tonight that, Father, you would help and touch and move. And Lord, I pray tonight you'd speak to our heart. We'll thank you for all you do for us. For we ask it in Christ's name. And all God's people said, you can be seated tonight. What did I do with that water? Is it over there? Thank you, sir. Tonight, I want to stay just a little while in chapter number 6 of 1 Corinthians. I have been asked many times, Preacher, is it right for Christians to go to court against one another? And I want you to understand for just a moment the context of the passage that I'm reading. The context of this passage, and matter of fact, everyone that I study after and everyone that I look at through the Word of God, no doubt, this is all pretty much on level plane. But you got to understand that the Apostle Paul is dealing once again with the church at Corinth. In other words, he's dealing with the church, trying to get that church where it needs to be, trying to help them to see where they need to be, and he's giving us, in the Word of God, the entire example that we need to follow and that we need to have. Now, I want you to understand tonight that what Paul is saying to them, he is saying to them exactly what you're reading. And it's more about taking people to court over disputes or to take them as a lawsuit. Matter of fact, if you study much of this, you'll find out that in this day, just like in our day, people thought they could get anything they wanted just by taking someone to court and suing them. Now, do I believe in the Word of God that the Bible teaches that Christians ought to not take other Christians to law in front of people that are unsaved? And the answer is absolutely. I believe that's exactly what the Bible teaches. And I'm going to show you some things tonight, and I'm going to be honest with you, some of them are not going to set well with your flesh. Uh, because as you study this passage, God gives us a guideline on how to deal with disputes, uh, and how to deal with disagreements, and how to handle things, not outside of the church, but inside of the church, and deal with things according to to the Word of God. And so Paul says, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Now I was reading something very interesting. I, I'm amazed that stuff like this happens. But I was reading after a preacher I really enjoyed following after and reading some commentary after it. He was sharing a story and just blew my mind, but this story is very much true. Uh, there was a church in another state from North Carolina that were having a major, major disruption in their church. The church had got to the place where it was split right down the middle. It had one part of the church that wanted one direction, another part of the church that wanted another direction. And so they could never get past the stalemate. And so the church couldn't settle it themselves. So they took it before a judge, an unsaved judge, to settle the dispute. After it was before them for a while, the judge made it a decision very quickly. And it was over. 
And he told which portion of them could have the church building and the facility. The other part of that group went down and, of course, started another church because that's always the will of God. And so they went down and started another church because what we need is another Unity Baptist Church right down the road. Amen? And so they started that. I was reading this thing and this man was so appalled that Christians would take church things before the unsaved. But when I found out how it all started, I was amazed. True story. Large church. They had a huge meal in their family life center. And one of the deacons had a smaller piece of ham than one of the teenagers sitting nearby him. And he got offended because he was a deacon. And the entire church blew up over a deacon's ham or piece of ham not big enough. You know, you laugh at that, but you ought to be a pastor. And you ought to hear some of the idiotic stuff that we hear. And you ought to listen to people. I Listen, I couldn't even get out of this building the other night on talking about letting things go For some people come to me and can't let things go. You say, preacher, you're going to offend somebody. Whoop to do. I do that all the time. I'm telling you, friend, we need to grow up. And stuff like this does not need to happen. Dear any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Here's what Paul is saying. One day we're going to judge the world as the church and we can't even handle our own small affairs that go on inside of that we've got to take it to the unsaved. Now, don't you listen to me tonight. The reason the Apostle Paul, and you've got to study Bible in context. You've got to know why what's being said is being said. You can't grab a verse and build a doctrine on it. You can't grab a verse out and all of a sudden this is what we believe. That's why people are so messed up with tongues and the Spirit and, and so messed up. They grab a verse, jerk it out of the Bible and they build an entire doctrine and an entire religion on something that's not even in context of Scripture. But I want you to notice this. What Paul has literally been trying to do, and if you've been with me during this study and preaching through this book, what he's trying to do is tell the Corinthian church, if y'all don't get yourself right and get over all this petty stuff and get the fornication out and get all the mess out, you're going to send a lost world to hell and they're going to die without God and you need to get your life straightened out. And God said, or Paul said, through the Spirit of God, you need to get some things right with the Lord in the church. Amen. 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 Now I will say this to you. Taking matters like a bigger piece of ham than somebody else got to the unsaved, what does that say to them about Christianity? What does that say to them about the church? No wonder a lot of people don't want to have anything to do with going to church. No wonder a lot of preacher's kids can't wait to get out of it. And that's no excuse and that's no reason. They'll stand before God giving account of their own life. But I'm telling you this, we hear so much penny any stuff that doesn't even matter, that ought to not even be brought in the house of God, that you ought to build a bridge, realize you're a Christian, get over it, and move on. Amen. 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 You say, now brother Chris, you better be careful because you're going, well, you might, you might touch somebody wrong preaching this. Some folk need to be touched. Matter of fact, some folk are touched. Amen. 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 I, I'm amazed over the penny and mess people deal with and grieve church services and grieve God and put old pooch lip on their face and look like, hey, I'm telling you, friend, you don't come here to look across the aisle. You don't come here to look across the church. You don't come here to talk about anybody else. You come here to worship God. That's what you come for. 
Amen. Now listen. Paul says, know ye not, verse 3, that we shall judge the angels. Judge angels. Talking about fallen angels. How much more things that pertain to this life. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who at least, who are least esteemed in the church. One man believes that Paul's using sarcasm here. Another man believes that, and I personally believe this way, I believe that the reason Paul said that is, if you want to really do something, just take that brother that ain't never part of nothing, that's low esteemed, don't have a whole lot of much, and let him sit over and kind of figure out what y'all need to do a little bit. Right? I mean, a lot of the ministry is nothing more than sticking pacifiers in people's mouth and trying to satisfy little penny ante problems that Christians need to build a bridge and get over. Say amen right there. I mean, I try my best to tell you how much you could enjoy your life, but some of you refuse that. Some of you are not going to do that because I'm telling you what you're going to do. You're going to have one conflict after another conflict. Uh, you're going to act like just an just a old, old white redneck and you're going to constantly be a turmoil in your life and you're going to constantly, because you just can't seem to be happy unless you've got a problem to deal with. Well, God said it, let it be handled in the church. So I figured God put one man over it in the church. So I want to share some things with you in the Word of God. And by the way, chapter 6 didn't come up by accident. I'm going right through the book. Amen. Don't blame me for it falls. And I don't know if this pertains to you or not, but I'm preaching like everybody in here is guilty. Is that all right? I mean, I don't know. Praise God, I'm depressed enough. I don't know what to know what you're doing. Amen. I feel God wants me to know. He'll let me know. Matter of fact, he might be letting me know right now, huh? Think he might be letting me know? I'll tell you what's even worse than that. He might be letting you know. Somebody says, Brother Hayes is going to be at church Wednesday night. He's here. <laughs> know you not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life. Then he says, I speak to your shame. He said, I'll be honest with you, it is a shame that I've got to tell you not to take legal stuff and disputes to the world. He said, it's a shame that the church can't handle its own affairs. We scream and holler, scream and holler, this right here, don't we? The government ought to stay out of our stuff. And what do we do? We run right to the world to settle our disputes to the unsaved. Now, this will go over like a lead balloon, but I read a story today of a gentleman who had insurance on his business and his business was broken into and he lost all of his tools. He lost everything in the business because the man that sold him the insurance was taking the premiums and spending them on something else besides the insurance he was paying him for. Now, here's what's going to blow your mind. Because the man that was doing it said he was a Christian, the other man refused to sue him or take him to court. And he took a loss for everything that he lost. You say, preacher, wait a minute now. That's taken a little far. Well, from what I can see, he did exactly what the Word of God said. Now, I don't know if I'd do that or not, or I'd go find a tool and maybe help him understand the love of Jesus. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this. Understand, understand in the truth of that, he is doing what is biblical. Now, if he could have handled it among them, or maybe if they went to church together and he could have handled it, went to his pastor and said, look, I, I, he spent all the prayer we think he ought to do. I, I, maybe he could have been church like Paul said earlier, put out, and then they could have dealt with it. But this man was so adamant that I will not carry unsaved or a saved man to court, he would not mess with it. I don't have the ending. I don't have to be able to say to you, but God blessed him anyway. I have no clue. I just know what he did. Boy, I tell you what, that takes a Bible believer to do something like that. And I know what's going through a lot of you around. Well, I'll tell you right now, man, somebody did something like that to me. Well, you, you, you're saying that because of your flesh. 
And I'm, and I'm thinking, I'll be honest with you, and I read it, I'm like, wow. I don't know if I can do that or not. But I'm going to tell you what, it's biblical. It's biblical. Now, I want to say some things too tonight, and I want to give you these because I believe this is growing stuff. I believe this will help us. And there's some of you ain't been saved long. Uh, there's some of you been saved long, but you're still sucking on a bottle of milk. Uh, there's others that are beginning to grow a little bit. We got every, every kind of person like that in every church. Every church does. And I want to say this to you. We need to learn how to handle our fires with other people. Right? And, and let me just say this. If you got a problem, don't let the unsaved world deal with it. Does anybody listen to me? Don't let the unsaved world, you know why? Because the more they see us act like them, the less they're going to believe that we even have a God at all and it even matters at all. And the whole book of 1 Corinthians is Paul trying to say, look, church, if you don't get this stuff settled, People are going to die and go to hell because of your testimony. Now, there'll be somebody waiting for me at the door. My preacher, do you really think literally? My preacher, I don't know. You don't have to come and ask me, do I think I would do it? I'm not preaching this about what I'll do. It. I'm preaching this because it's Bible. Right? right. right? Amen. I mean, you know, if Brother Clark stole my pencil, me and Brother Clark would have to settle it. But if I go to the unsaved world to settle it, I'm stepping out of what Paul said. Now, you know, I mean, I figured, it, I mean, it's probably two lead balloons. Because, boy, when we hear stuff like this. But I want to give all of you something I want you to really pay close attention to. Every bit of this stuff can be settled with one word forgiveness. If we could ever learn to forgive like Christ forgave, if we could ever learn, I'm not talking about unsaved people. I'm not talking about unsaved world. Hey, the Bible doesn't even say that we cannot take the unsaved world to court. It says other Christians. Is anybody listening? Read your Bible. You study. Bring it back to them and you find different. It doesn't say that. But you know what he's dealing with Really? He's dealing with inside of the church and the disputes among God's people inside of the church. Now, y'all know me sometime. I get myself in trouble, and I probably will right here. But that'd be okay. You know, I got a wife that loves me and a daughter that loves me some. And Let's read a little farther. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between the brethren. Here's what he's saying. You're going to keep on taking this stuff to the lost world. Do you know why lost people don't want to have nothing to do with your God? Mister, I'm going to post everything on Facebook. Do you know why the lost world gets sick and tired of being around Christians that play games on Sundays? Why they look across auditoriums with disdain for somebody else? Because they cannot forgive. They're so full of pride, they cannot let it go. You know what forgiveness is? I read this definition. Forgiveness is forfeiting or giving away your right for retaliation. Forgiveness is saying, even though I may have been wrong, I'm going to forego and I'm going to give away my right for retaliation. A preacher, I just don't know if I'm about it. All right, you don't like what Paul said about it? Let's see what Jesus said about it. Matthew 5. Turn over there in your Bible. Matthew 5. What did Jesus say about it? Matthew chapter number 5. We'll just, uh, well, we'll begin verse 38. Is anybody there? Matthew 5, 38. You have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, 
that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, watch this, let him have thy cloak also. Now again, you're looking at me like I wrote it. And you say, Jesus is who you follow. This is His words. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn not thy way. You have heard that been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Look what Jesus says. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now you're not going to do that because what you're going to do is get bitter and angry and be able to tell everybody what they did to you and try to draw you a crowd. And that's why churches are full of a bunch of dead Baptists full of the devil and carnality and cannot in any way at all have any kind of touch of God on them because they are too busy retaliating and stirring strife than they are biblically doing what's right. You say, preacher, will you ever practice that in your life? Buddy, for 30 years. If I retaliated to everybody, I have people come to me sometimes, it blows my mind how, how, how sometimes I think people live in a really dark world. And they come to me sometimes and say, Preacher, do you know so and so don't like you? And I'm like, you got to be kidding. <laughs> Man, I don't even have to get out of the building before I don't walk by 50 people who don't like me. But you know what? God didn't call me to please you. God didn't cause me to please the God down the road. God didn't call me to please some preacher across town. God called me to preach the Word of God. And if I can pillow my head at night and know I'm in this book and I'm doing the best I can, honey, that's all real. I'll be honest with you. I'll take an aspirin and get over it. All this gray hair on my head does not come from, listen, I'll build a bridge in a heartbeat. You'd be surprised. Now, you may not be on the top line. I may not be fellowshipping much with you. I'm being honest. I learn who snakes are. That's right. You learn stuff like that. You learn who to kind of just kind of stay away from blabber mouth, wiggle jaw, sister wiggle jaw. You just stay away from them. You learn that stuff. I'm preaching right. I don't tell God I'm not preaching Sunday, but I'm preaching right. I might preach a little Sunday, by the way. Never know. Amen. Now look here in the Word of God. He goes on, Jesus does. Now, I know, and I'm one of the first preachers that used to jump up and say, well, I'll tell you right now, if somebody hits me on one cheek, I'll bust them anyway. That's really not what it's about. He's not telling you, pow, oh, wait a minute, hit this one. It's about retaliating against those, not necessarily it really hit you, though it could be the case, but that do things that you have to learn to let go of and move on. I'll be honest with you. I think some people are fairly, fairly good Christians that I pastor until I just listen to them a little bit. And then I think, my soul, how old are you? Six? Am I right? I warned some of you a long time ago. You have to realize that everybody is not going to see eye to eye. Everybody's not going to walk along zippity doo dah arm in arm. People are different. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody, but you got to learn to move on with your life without getting dug up in bitterness and anger and strife before the unsaved world. I won't be totally honest with you. I don't have no time for it. I'll be truthful. You come to me with some of that mess 
And I might look you dead in your eyes. Won't you grow up? I'll leave that church. Ain't nobody locked you in here. Amen. Nobody locked you in. It's open right now. Brother Larry, open the door for you right now if you need it. See Amy? Here she goes. That's right. Take that young and will you too. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? When the lost world, when the lost world knows of our disputes, what does it do to them? Can you imagine, Brother Hensley, an unsaved judge knowing I've got a case in front of me over who had the biggest piece of ham? I think I want to be a Christian. Right? It's pitiful. Every church you're going to got a split, got an eruption, got this, got that. Over stuff that doesn't even matter. And then you come in here and grieve the Holy Ghost. Come in here with an attitude and grieve God. (laughs) Y'all think, don't nobody see nothing up here. Y'all think don't preacher don't hear stuff when you don't want him to hear it either. Then when I watch eyes go. <laughs> right? You're a grown woman, a man, you got a problem with a kid? Come talk to me. I'll get in front of you. Two ladies here got a problem to me. Don't have no problem with that. Come talk to me. I'll sit you down in my office and let y'all fight it out. But don't take him from an unsaved world. They got enough sending them to hell already. Huh? Without a, without a bunch of pacifier sucking, bottle sucking Baptists. I'm preaching right. So we'll vote you out if you keep preaching like that. I didn't have no problem with evangelism. I liked it. I'm not going to stop preaching truth. And I'm going to tell you this, we got to learn to grow up. You say, well, preach, I've been done wrong. I understand. I've been hurt, buddy, to the point that I wanted to go out to somebody and I didn't just want to go out to them and get even. I want to go out to them and, and alliterate, literally put them into extinction. Don't look at me like you flew in here. There's really a whole lot of you quiet right now because you know you. You let one of these girls say, look at all them girls. You're talking about trouble, man. You let one of these girls hear that one of the others said something about them. Oh, my soul. It'd be five of them over there in the corner going, she thinks she's something. You know I'm right. Don't come to me with it because if you do, I'll say, why don't me and you get her and let's go talk. Face to face, eyebrow to eyebrow. Let's go get a couple of them milk bottles and suck on them a while. Get you a pacifier. We might even go buy you a pamper. Well, I just don't live my life like that. I don't understand that. There's people everywhere don't like me. It's hard to wonder why. There's people everywhere don't like That's all right. I don't, you listen. You know what? <laughs> I can't let the unsaved world. I know somebody been running me in the ground for I don't know how long. They don't go here. If they did, then I talked to them. But I had somebody unsaved ask me, did I know the person to try to get something out of me? And I said, yeah, I do know him. And he said, you and him friends? And I said, well, far as I know. And he kept on. And I would not say what he wanted me to say. You know why? Because he was unsaved. All he needed was me to say something negative as a man of God about that person. And then you know what he said? Well, if that's Christianity. Did I want to say it? 
everything in my body. Oh, y'all listen. I'm talking about everything in me wanted to tell the truth. But you know what I say about them battles? Some battles aren't worth fighting. What good would it do if I won it? I could walk around and go, used to have a little muscle there anyway. Brother, I do that, please. I could, I could walk. Listen. It doesn't do any good. What I'm preaching is helpful. I got to quit and we got to pray for our brother. What I'm doing tonight is I'm trying to help you say, and I'm not trying to be mean. I am trying to be really blunt because I'm hoping eventually somebody's going to get it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not trying to be mean. I struggle with my flesh like you do. I mean, we all do. But we got to remember people are watching us. Am I right, Miss Hazel? Will you help me over there? Y'all get mad at me. Don't get mad at Miss Wendy now. She's sweet as she can be. But sometimes you're going to be surprised. There's times she'd like to do a little preaching. He says, but brother, go with the law with brother. And that before the unbelievers, verse 6. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you. That word fault is really interesting. I looked it up. Because you go to law one with another. Watch what he says now. Why do you not rather take wrong? Have you ever read that in 1 Corinthians? Why do you not rather take wrong? Does anybody know what that verse means? Here's what he's saying. Why not sometime, even though there's a dispute or something's been done, why don't you just take it and just move on? Because pride won't let us do that. Now, I didn't say I like everything in the King James Bible. But it doesn't change the fact that it is the Bible. Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? That is a powerful statement. Do you know what he's saying? If somebody does you wrong sometime, why don't you just build a bridge and get on by it? Let it go. Let it go. Is anybody listening? I mean, am I helping somebody? You're you're getting this preached verse by verse. This is exactly what it means. And let's be honest, this is not our attitude, is it? It's not not our attitude. He says, then he, here's Paul's preaching. Nay, no. He said, you do wrong and a fraud, and that your brethren. He says, what you ought to do, you ought to let it go, you ought to let it move on, but nah, you're not going to do that. You're going to do wrong, and a fraud your brother. You're going to go get even. But I'll tell you what, I, can I say this to you tonight? This bitterness, anger, malice, getting even life is a lonely life. Now, I'm not talking about tonight condoning people doing wrong. I got people in this church that have been hurt really bad by people professing Christians. I'm not talking about you condone what people do. I'm not talking about that you, but you know, bitterness is this. Bitterness is you're the one, you, you're the one drinking the poison. You can't do that because the world is looking on. Right? I, I'm not trying to be mean as your pastor. But Lord, how mercy grow up. Amen. You do not still need, 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 still need to be on the bottle. That's right. Amen. Grow up. Amen. Grow up. If some of you could live the life of a public figure like I have to live sometime and hear the stuff I hear and move on, there's some of you to quit church 20 years ago. Because you know what you'd have done? You'd have took it so personal and got so mad that you'd either retaliated and got burnt up with bitterness. It's easy. I just come to the fact in my life, well, don't have nobody like me, so I'm just going on. Then I get people give me M&Ms. I think, well, hallelujah, maybe they like me a little bit. <laughs> or either they're trying to kill me by giving me too much sugar. <laughs> right? Treat people decent. Stand to your feet. We're getting ready to pray for our brother. Treat people decent. Does anybody listen to me? Be ye kind, tenderhearted. What's that verse? Be ye kind, tenderhearted. 
How does that go? Forgiving one another, forgiving one another for, even for God in Christ's sake and forgiving you, right? Somewhere. Is that what the verse is? Can I tell you this? Hey, look here at me. This would be a good time if you got a spinner, put it up. Ain't nobody got one I'm picking. Look at me. Look at, everybody look at me. I'm trying to say something to you. Look at me. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this straight off, straight as I can say it. You ready? This is a good church. This church has a touch of God. This church is enjoyable to pastor. All the stuff I'm talking about right now, I don't hear this stuff every day. I just don't want to hear it at all. I don't hear it every day. This is a good church. Look at Wednesday night. But I'm going to tell you something. What can ruin it is when an unsaved world has to hear the garbage. We're all going to have riffs. Y'all agree with that? How many of y'all married? Slip up your hand. How many of y'all that are married have never one time had a riff or disagreement in your family? Never one time. Anybody? Seriously. Is anybody? Brother Bill, you haven't? Oh, okay. <laughs> how, many, how many of y'all one time in your life, look, everybody look at me now. How many of you one time, any couple one time that's never had a riff, never got angry, never had a disagreement, any, any married couple? I mean, honestly, is there anybody like that? And you can be honest if you are because I want to talk to you. <laughs> Rachel, is that the case for you? <laughs> but Rachel, since you're so kind to of talk to me, watch it. But you're still with him. And you know what? If somebody messed with him, buddy, you'd rire up in a minute. You can get mad at him slap him upside the head, but ain't nobody else better do it. Am I telling you right? I watched Brother Brad with his boy. Love that boy. I mean, love. But there have been a few riffs, haven't there? There have been a few times you want to take him out behind the woodshed and whack him upside of his head. But you know what? Been nobody else better mess with him. Isn't that right? You know what I'm saying? Why do I say that? You don't have to agree with everybody all the time, and y'all don't have to go walking hand in hand with a bluebird on your shoulder. But you do have to serve God together. And you do have to live for God. Amen. You can go home and you and your wife can chew me upside the wall and down the other about what I say. Just don't do it to the lost world. Do it with your wife, you know, tell her, whatever. Be careful around your kids. But then if you really want to step up, come tell me. But if I'm preaching book, I'm telling you, you're going to be wasting your time because I'm way too hard headed for that. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you tonight, Lord, for the privilege, God, of being able to come tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, it ain't always what we want to hear. Lord, when I was studying this and thinking, Lord, my soul, God, are you asking much of me? And I realized you're not asking any more of me than you've already done. God, you said forgive them on the cross. While this world was crucifying you, you were saying forgive. Lord, I thought many times you could have called 10,000 angels. You didn't have to. You could have done it yourself. But God, when you have an opportunity in your forgiveness, you didn't take advantage of retaliation. You just died for our sin. Lord, I know there are those here tonight, and they hear their pastor preach this, and they think, and preacher, you just, you just don't know what somebody or whatever is done or said and God I know it's difficult because I know what my flesh wants to do at times but Lord I know this as well God if I win that battle what good is it going to do what's it going to matter and Lord if I forgive and move on I wonder how much happier I'd be Which how much happier my life would be Lord I thank you tonight for the word of God Thank you for James tonight, Lord, and him have enough confidence in us that we'd pray for him. And Lord, I'll do that. Thank you for all the prayer requests tonight. Lord, this is the cream of the crop of Calvary here tonight. These people at church tonight because they want to be in church here on a Wednesday, work their jobs day. 
And I've tried to my best tonight to feed them. Because God, I love them. I want them to enjoy their Christian life. It's too short not to enjoy it. Jesus, I love you. God, forgive me when I retaliate. Forgive me when I say things I'd be better off not to say and when I have bad thoughts in my heart. Help me be more like you. Help me to be more like you. I need that, Lord. I want to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen.